again, my little yarnivores and spiderettes. Fiber Spider back again with another tutorial just for you. And today we have got a really lovely squooshy stitch. This is the Jasmine stitch. It's really easy. It's only a one row repeat and it is thick. It is very squooshy. Absolutely love it think it would be ideal for perhaps a scarf or a cowl or especially a blanket. Now, that being said, the Jasmine Stitch is a yarn eater. Yes, because it is multiple puffs worked at the same time. So yes, it does eat yarn. That being said, it's gorgeous. I love it. Now, this particular swatch that I have worked up, this was the colorway of Wildflower using Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo. <laughs> and I also did another swatch to show you how it does look different. Now this, I think, is stunning. I think it's absolutely gorgeous. You know, the petals are all different colors and everything, but at the same time, it's not too muddy. So I really do like how this turned out. Now, that being said, I also worked on this swatch. Now this is using the Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in the purple colorway. I think it's really quite, you know, pretty but understated by comparison. And that being said, we're going to be using another variegated for today. Today we are going to be using this lovely colorway here. This one is also Red Heart Super Saver Jumbo in the colorway of Icelandic. And uh, yeah, oh, also, before I forget, with this yarn, it's a weight of four, I used a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. It's a size I. And well, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so before we get started, started a note on colorways. Now you saw the wildflowers colorway and you saw the ombre colorway. Now with a variegated, the reason why I think that this particular variegated works well is because the color change doesn't happen like every couple of inches or so. No, there's actually a good length. So this is where the white starts and then it starts to change here. So there's a fair amount of length in between where the color changes. There's like a little bit of spot there, and then you have a decent amount of length in between the color changes. So it enables you to get, uh, you know, a like a, a petal going on before it changes. Otherwise, if the colorway is too short with the variegation, then like I said, it becomes a little bit muddy. So that being said, we shall begin. Okie dokie. So instead of starting off as we typically do with a series of chains that we're going to be working off of, no, instead for this stitch, we're going to be working off of a base of puffs. And I'm going to show you how to do that now. So starting off with our obligatory slip knot as per usual, nothing new there, and a chaining of one to begin with. Okay. From here, we're going to create our first puff. So pulling up the yarn a little bit, doesn't have to be too terribly much. Yarn over, going into that chain and pulling up a loop. So that's one pass, if you will. We're going to do another one. Yarn over, going into the chain, pulling up a loop. That's two passes. If you want to, you can do more than that. I think that two is just fine for me. So, you know, fiddle around with it, play around, see if you want more or less. Keep in mind that as we go, uh, and we're going to have to do multiple uh, petals at the same time, there's going to be a lot of loops to contend with. So two, I think, is a good number. That being said, I'm going to grab the yarn and then pull the yarn through those loops and then going in through that loop that we created with the yarn that we pulled, going to then pull up a loop and then pull through two. Now that is one finished puff. Okay. 
then for the next puff, instead of working into a chain like we did here, we're going to work into this space right there in between where we finished and where we did our little doodad right there, our connection. So I'm going to do a bunch of these, so hopefully it's clear. So pulling up a little bit of a loop, yarn over, going in between in the base there, pulling up a loop, doing it again. So yarning over, going into the base there, pulling up a loop, grab the yarn, pull through our loops, going in to that loop that we created by pulling, pull up a loop, pull through two. So now we've got two puffs. And you can make as many puffs as you want for the, the, the base chain, figuratively speaking. I'm going to do a bunch. So pull up a loop, yarn over, going in through the base there, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going in again into the base, pulling up a loop, grab my yarn, pull through my loops, going into that loop, pulling up my yarn there, pull through two. Pull up the yarn, yarn over, going into the base, pull up a loop, yarn over, going into the base again, pulling up a loop, grab the yarn, pull through all of my loops, going into that loop, pull up the yarn, pull through two. So already I have four puffs. Do a couple more. Pull up the yarn, go through, do it again, yarn over, going into that base there, pulling up the yarn, grab the yarn on the side, pull through all of my loops, there we go. And it does take practice, okay? And the fact that my hands are so shaky this evening is not helping, and I do apologize for that, but I acknowledge it. Um, I'm, I'm feeling okay, a little bit, but okay. So at any rate, going to do a couple more. And however wide you want your base to be, you just make that many puffs, plus one additional puff. And that will make sense when we're ready to do the first row. Because right now we're just doing the base. Okay, how many do we actually have now? One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven is a lucky number. Okay. You know what? I think let's do three more just for stuff and giggles. You know, eventually you do get the hang of it, but it does take practice and time getting used to the technique because it's very different from at least what I'm used to, you know, just working within a, a base chain, you know, this is a bit different. Okay, so I now have, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This will make 10. And there you go. All right, so this is our base chain, figuratively speaking. All right, so there you go. That's how you make the, the base of your piece. All righty, so because I want the base of my piece to have 10 puffs, I then added one more puff 
so that we can make that happen. And it'll make sense in just a moment, because right now we need to work three puffs simultaneously. And I, I'm not going to lie, it is a little bit fiddly and tricky, especially at the beginning, but it gets easier the more you do it. And also, I can't stress this enough, you don't want to use yarn that is prone to splitting, because it's difficult enough working with as many loops as we're going to be working with. If your yarn splits, it's a veritable nightmare, not going to lie. So that being said, we have 11 puffs right now. So we're going to start another one, but not finish it. Pull up the loop, yarn over, going into the base just as we have been. Pull up a loop, yarn over, going in again, and pulling up a loop. So we have the equivalent to one puff right here. Now, going in between this puff and the next puff, we're going to go into that space in between the join, the where the puffs meet. Yarn over. Scooch right in, pull up a loop, yarn over, going in again, and pulling up a loop. So that's the equivalent to two puffs. We need one more. So, yarning over, going in between the next two puffs, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So yes, we have a lot of loops. Now, going to hold my yarn again, just as we did before when we were creating our base chain of puffs. And so holding the yarn, grab the yarn, and we're going to pull it through all of these loops. It is fiddly, it is tricky, but it is worth it. Just go slow and patient. There, haha, -ha! success. Okay, then after pulling through all those loops, stick your hook into that loop that we created by pulling the yarn. Okay. Pull up a loop and pull through two. So, as you can see, the 11th base puff that we did is this one right here. It gives us the height that we need. And then we did three puffs together. And that is how we're going to proceed for the rest of the base of our project. So, Let's carry on, shall we? Okay, so to continue on in the same fashion, going to pull up our yarn a little bit, yarning over, and then going into the join here, pulling up a loop, yarning over, going into that same spot, pulling up a loop. So that's one. Then into the base here, we're going to do another one, and then in between this puff and the next puff, we're going to do another. That's our three. So yarning over, going into the base here, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going to that same spot, pull up a loop. Okay, we've got the equivalent of two puffs. Yarn over, going in between the next two, pull up a loop, yarn over, and going in again, pulling up a loop, then, again, this is important, hang on to your yarn before pulling it through. And yes, it is fiddly. It is curmudgeon -y. But if you go slow and you're persistent and you're patient, you can do it. So then going to go in to that loop where we held our yarn, pull up a loop, and then pull through two. And that's really all there is to it for the remainder of this base row. So pulling up a loop, going in with the yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over, going in again, pulling up a loop. That's one puff. Yarn over, going into the base here, pull up a loop, yarn over, going in again, pulling up a loop, that's two puffs. Yarn over, going into that next join there. Pull up a loop. Yarn over, going in again. Pull up a loop. Okay, we've got our three puffs ready to go. Grab the yarn and pull through all of those loops. 
There we go. And then going into that loop where we held the yarn, pull up a loop, pull through two. So working three puffs, it's a lot of loops. I am not going to lie. That's why, you know, you may want to do two, uh, two passes or three passes. I think also it depends on the length of the barrel of your hook. If you're using one that doesn't have so much of a taper like mine, it might be easier for you. Or if you're using perhaps a, uh, a Tunisian hook, that might work out better for you as well. Personally, I love these hooks. All right, so I'm going to do another bunch. Pulling up the loop, pulling up the loop. So that's one puff going into the base. You're on over, pulling up a loop, pulling up a loop. That's two puffs. You're on over, going into the join of the next, pulling up a loop, you're on over and pulling up a loop. Okay, and then grab the yarn and going to go through all of them. There we go. Going into that little loop that we created when we held our yarn, pulling up a loop and pull through two. And when you have more fabric, it is a lot easier to work this, trust me. So again, doing it, pulling up the yarn, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going into the base here, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going into the next, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, hold the yarn. And what I also find helps is as I'm doing this, I use my my pinky and my other fingers to try to sort of stabilize uh, what, what we have going on here. It's tricky, uh, but when you have more fabric, you don't need to do that quite so much. So again, holding the yarn, and we're going to work through all of these loops. So this is what I'm talking about. It's just sort of like try to stabilize it a little bit in my way. And I let go of my loop. That's not good. I still got it right there. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so then going in, pulling up a loop, and pull through. Two. Okay. Now that, that looks kind of messy right there. I am not happy with that, to be perfectly frank. So I'm going to undo it. I know I'm very fidgety this evening. I don't know why. I didn't have a tremendous amount of coffee, just, you know, the usual. Okay, so starting that over. Hey, you know what? It happens. So I'm just doing the exact same thing as I have been doing. There we go. And then we'll try this again. See, I did it before. There we go. See, I can do it. I'm just, I'm, I'm a bit of a fidgety mess tonight. I'm still forging ahead though. All right, so we got a couple more to do. Not too bad. So I got my one puff. Going into the base for my second puff. And then going in between for my third puff. Grabbing the yarn, pulling through all of my loops. Sort of, ish, kind of, got it. Okay, pulling through that loop, pull through two, got our three petals right there. Okay, and again, and then at the very, very end, it's a little bit different as to where we go into, and I will show you what I am talking about in just a momentito.
There we go. Okay, got a few more to go. Not a big deal. Okay, got my three puffs ready to go. There we are. Okay. And my hand is cramping. <laughs> and okay, so there we go. And we've got one more puff left. And I'm going to show you what to do once we've reached the end of the row. Okay, so when you only have one puff left on your base, we're going to be doing the, the third puff into that first chain that we created, the last chain of the row. So starting off as per usual, pulling up a loop, yarning over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up another loop. That's one puff. Yarn over, going into the base here, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up another loop, going into that first chain that we created, yarning over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up another loop. And then, yes, as per usual, need to hold the yarn before pulling through all of these loops, which is a bit of a beast, but with persistence, you can do it. And I got caught on apply, but haha, <laughs> I persevered. Okay, so I pulled through all those loops, then pulling through the loop where we held our yarn, pull that up, and then pull through two. And that is our last three. All right, and that is the end of the first row. And then the second row is all there is to it for the rest of your project. So let's hit to it. Okay, so when you're ready for your next row, start by turning your work. And like we did previously, we had our 10 and then we needed to create one extra one. Well, we already have the 10 lined up, so we need to create that extra one. So going to pull up the yarn, yarn over in that base there, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, grab the yarn on the side, and then pull through our loops, going into that loop that we held, pull up a loop, and pull through two. So that puff, that single puff there, is going to give us the height that we need for the rest of the row. Now we we proceed by doing our three puffs simultaneously. So pulling up a loop, yarn over, going into that base there, and pulling up a loop, yarn over, going in again, pulling up a loop. So we have the equivalent of one puff right there. Then going into the base, and then in between the next puffs, going to make our second and third puffs. So yarn over, going into the base here, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going in again, pulling up a loop. So we've got two puffs ready to go. Yarn over, going into the next, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going in again, pulling up a loop. And then we have our three puffs ready. So holding the yarn, grabbing, and Pulling through slowly, and I'm getting caught on the plies, but I'm going to try to forge ahead. Haha, -ha, I did it. 
tricky, but you know, like I said, once you have more fabric, it's a lot easier. So again, going in, pulling up my loop there, and then pulling through two. So these three that we just did, and then there was the first one to give us the height. And that's really all that you have to do for the rest of your project. So I'm going to proceed in this fashion, pulling up that loop, going in, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, going into the base right down here, yarning over, going in, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going in again, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going into the next join, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop. Grab the yarn and hold it. Pull through all of your loops. That one was much easier. Then going into that loop where we held the yarn, pull up the yarn and pull through two. Again, pulling it up, yarning over, going into that base there, yarn over, pulling up another loop. Yarn over, going to the base down here, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up another loop, yarn over, going into the next one, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, hold the yarn, pull through all of your loops. I can do this. I did not do that. <laughs> uh, that was an epic fail if there ever was one. But you know what? I'm a human spider. It happens. I'm going to just do it again. Okay, let's do this again. I got it, haha. <laughs> and then going in where we held the yarn, pull up the loop, pull through two. There, see? Still looks pretty in spite of my shakiness. <laughs> and then grab some more yarn because yes, this does eat up a lot of yarn. As far as the exact amount of yardage that you would need for your project, your guess is as good as mine because I haven't made a, a finished project utilizing this stitch as of yet, at least not a scarf or a blanket. So I would say buy more than you think you're going to need. And if you don't end up using all of it, return some or add it to your stash like I do. Don't worry, I won't, I won't tell anybody. There we go. So after a while and you get into the proverbial groove, if you will, it does become a bit easier and smoother. Also, yeah, I would not suggest using a a fashion yarn, a fuzzy yarn, or anything like that. You know, you want your yarn to be like a nice, clean worsted. Um, otherwise, you probably will run into more problems than I'm even running into. So, because we've done so many of these already, I'm just, I'm just sort of tooling along here. because it's the exact same thing over and over and over again. There we go. And just got a couple more. 
and I'll show you how to finish the second row. Because we're not going to be working into a, a, a chain, we're going to be working into a join, if you will. There we go. And I'm running out of yarn already. My goodness gracious me. Okay, so I've got my two puffs. I need one more. Okay, now... I have one puff left, and right here, that is the equivalent to the last chain that we had from the previous row. So I'm going to show you what I mean. Just doing my first puff as normal, doing my second puff as normal, and then going in to that join right there with my third puff. Then again, grabbing the yarn, pulling through all of those loops. There. And then, going through the yarn that we held, pull up a loop, pull through two. And there you go. So that is the end of the, the second row, if you will. And it is looking gorgeous already. Because I like to be thorough and I love spending time with you guys, let's just do one more row together. Okay? Okay. Okay, so to start the next row, very much similar to what we did you know, before, I'm going to turn the work and then start in with just one isolated puff. Pull up that yarn, yarning over, going into that base there, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up another loop, grab the yarn, pull through our loops, go through that held yarn loop that we held there, pull the loop, and pull through two. This gives us the height. That's very, very important. Don't want to forget that. So after we have the height, we then do our three puff join. Pulling up that yarn, going in, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going into the base, Pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, going into the next one, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, and then hold that yarn and pull through all of our loops. Go through that little loop that we held, pull up a loop, pull through two. Ta -da! Okay. Again, another joining of three, so pulling that up, yarn over, going in, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop. Here we go, we got one puff, yarn over, going into the base down here, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going into the next one, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, hold the yarn, Pull through all of our loops. Got it. Okay, then going in through the yarn that we held, pulling up a loop, pull through two. Pull that up, yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going into the base. Pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, yarn over, going to the next, pulling up a loop, yarn over, pulling up a loop, grabbing that yarn, and then pulling through all of our loops. There we are, going in where we held, pulling up a loop, and pulling through two. So, yeah, there is quite a bit involved, not going to lie, but yeah, it is ultimately 
a one row, one stitch repeat, really. Uh, the only difference is, like, once you get going is that at the very beginning, you have to have a solitary uh, petal first. And then it's just all joining of threes. That's all there is to it. So once you get past the, the hump of dealing with your, your tension and getting through all of those loops. Now, if I had a nickel for every time I messed up one of these and had to go through again with all of my yarning over and pulling up a loops. You know, if I had a nickel for every time I mess one of them up, I'd be a rich spider. You know, I make mistakes too. I, I am not infallible. I do edit some things out, of course, but I do like to show you. It's like, yeah, I have, I have troubles too. I have issues. I don't get everything perfect right out of the gate. Okay, got a couple more. And then this row will also be done. Now, as far as if you're using a different weight of yarn, I would say, you know, use a, a hook size that corresponds with that yarn. I would not, however, <laughs> unless if you get a really good deal, I would not suggest using a, a bulky weight of yarn for this particular stitch because it's already really thick. Okay, bulky weight yarn is thick. The stitch itself is really thick. But moreover, whenever you're buying a bulky weight of yarn, yeah, you get the weight, but you really don't get the yardage, okay? That has been my experience. Um, and this eats through yardage. So that's why I would strongly suggest using a, a weight of four or thinner, even, um, for doing this stitch. Personal suggestion to you. Um, also, if you are using a thinner weight of yarn, you might want to consider doing more passes. Like I'm doing two passes per puff. You may want to consider doing more than that in order to bulk it up a little bit. Again, totally up to you. So just got a few more, and then this row shall be done. And I think that that should more or less give you a good generalized understanding of how this stitch will just continue to go, go, go. And the neat thing is that the, the top edge of the piece will look exactly the same as the, the bottom edge, as well as the sides, really. See, I've just got one more, one more grouping to do. And then this row shall be done. So going in to that last join right there. Then through all three. There we go. And then through that loop that we held, pull up and then pull through two. Now, if you look, this is the bottom edge. You know, we have all these puffs down here. Well, the top, we have puffs there too. And then on the sides, we've got three puffs here. So regardless of which side it is that, you know, you're looking at, you know, it's not like there's a definitive top, bottom, left, or right. No, they all look pretty much the same. So if you had a, a square piece, it would look the same from any which direction or angle. Also, yeah, 
in case you hadn't noticed, it is totally reversible as well. And I love it. I absolutely love this stitch. Yes, it has a bit of a learning curve, and you do need to practice it, and it is a an exercise in patience, albeit, I'll grant that, but I think that the results are worth it, and what do you think? You know, I mean, aside from my faux pas and my fumblings, what do you think? Um, you know, what, what do you think about this stitch? I think it's gorgeous. Now, if you used perhaps a, a cotton yarn, I think that this would make an awesome, awesome trivet or a hot mat because it does have a really nice amount of thickness. I would not suggest, however, using an acrylic yarn for a trivet or a hot mat because you could end up melting your yarn if you're using acrylic. Just saying, you know, or wool for that matter. Wool also would be fine because it is definitely more heat resistant. A natural fiber would be good. At any rate, I digress. <laughs> there you go. The jasmine stitch. Okie dokie, my dears. So that is going to conclude today's tutorial on the jasmine stitch. Really want to thank you very much for joining me today, and I hope that you liked today's tutorial. And if you did, please give a little thumbs up button down below, and in the comments section, let me know what you are going to do with this stitch. What sort of project, what sort of colorways, you know, yarn types, etc., etc. Always interested in your creative journey and your constructive criticism. That being said, until next time, you know what to do, right? I want all of you to stay inspired, stay caffeinated. Not as much as me. I know. I'm very caffeinated. <laughs> and stay stitching. Uh, take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you in my next video. Bye for now, everybody, and have a great day.